Hello and welcome. Today is September 3rd, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Bond, with Patents TV, and this is episode 27. I'd like to start by saying a special thanks to a vendor that we had our, on our last show, Greg Blackman, from I Can See Incorporated. He brought in a couple of VI products that he demonstrated their use, um, and if you have a chance to go back and take a look at those, um, it's episode 26. Uh, with the new beginning of the school year, we've had a lot of questions regarding some of the policies and, and some of the way that, that we loan equipment and those kinds of things. So I want to spend a little bit of time sharing with you um, some of the most common questions that we've had just recently as we get started with the school year. And if we have any questions or if you have any questions at all during, during the school year um, about anything that Patents does, please feel free to contact your site coordinator or the director and we'll do the best we can to, to answer those. The first one I'd like to start off with is, um, is the ICAM, the Indiana Center for Accessible Materials. And we've had some questions about where things are located and I just wanted to, to bring up our, our, the, the ICAM website, kind of just show you a few of the things that we have available. The Digital Rights Managers, or DRMs, um, as, as they're abbreviated, you can find a lot of information under the DRM Information tab. And one of the most common things is the case conference forms. And so the CCC forms are basically the case conference forms. And there are four forms um, that DRM should really take, take a look at. But the one that, that a lot of people get stumbled on is the one down here under eligibility um, for special uh, format and, and instructions. And that's where students, um, you can see how the students qualify if it's a, a blind, low vision, um, orthopedically impaired, or organically impaired. And organically impaired, we still have a lot of, of questions about really who qualifies under that um, particular um, title. The folks out of the ICAM, Martha Hammond, um, does a really good job with helping to identify those students that may very well um, qualify underneath that, that particular need. I'll back up here and another question that comes up are, are what are the tools that I need in order to actually get the download? And with the process, um, the DRM will register the student and then they will ask for the book if it's available um, in a NIMAS file format or an EPUB or a PDF, however they can get it. And one of the things that they have to do is they actually have to go in and um, download the the book, once they get the information or the link from the ICAM, they have 15 days to download it and to unlock it. So we've had some people over the summer, they, they've downloaded it, but they haven't unlocked it. And then when they go to unlock it, it's already timed out and they have to re-download it. So we're hoping that we can kind of take care of that. And under the ICAM tools, um, there's a program here and it is the client, uh, the download client for um, a PC and a download client for the Mac. And basically what that does is that's the, the program that you run. Um, it's a matter of identifying where the book is, is located. It will have an extension of WCC. You'll know it's still locked. And then you put in your password, your, your username and your password, and then um, click unlock. And it takes about 15 seconds or so in order for that to, to unlock. And then we're good to go. So um, that's a real important one you know, to have. Another one that, um, I want to also bring up here under, under the tools is our Read Out Loud. And Read Out Loud um, is a program that does text-to-speech and it was purchased by the state um, with patents um, for every public school, K-12, every public school in the state of Indiana to be put on any and all computers. And last school year we did a couple presentations on, on Read Out Loud and and um, so those are still available to take a look at. But um, it's available for, for all schools to, to use and it's, it's not free, it's been purchased. And that's one of the other questions that we have. Well, it's a free program. No, it's not free, it's been purchased. And it can also have take home rights for the student. So a student can actually take it home, put it on their computer, and there are, there are two types of, of the program. There's a Windows uh, platform and there's the Mac platform. So. Um, if you can get that downloaded, and, and again, a DRM has to do that, but once it's downloaded, you can put it on a CD, you can put it on a thumb drive, and, and then you can disseminate it however you want to um, throughout the, the, the building or, 
or the take home rights kinds of things. So I want to make sure that we plug that because we, we go to conferences and, and we let people know about it. And then it's already been out for probably about three years now that we've had the licensing um, and we have the updates as well. Um, and people just don't, don't seem to, to know that it's there. So we really want people to go out and use it. It's really a great program. Kind of looks like this. I'll pull this up. And when you start the, the program itself, it comes up and it defaults to the, to the Don Johnston um, home site or web page. Um, and so it already has some available accessible books. And right from there, you can go ahead and, and pull those up and, and take a look at them. If you want to change, and we've had some folks say, well, we may not be able to access, you know, because of our firewall or so forth, um, the, this particular web page, it just comes up blank. If you go up under tools and go to web settings, that's a place where you can actually go and, and if you have a, a district-wide um, homepage or a school homepage, you can change that, it automatically comes up to your homepage. So, you know, there, there's some uh, customizable features that you can actually go in and, and make some changes to. Um, as well as if there's proxy use, um, that's where we would find the information in order to, uh, to get around the, the proxy issues that some schools might be um, using. So, great program. Um, again, it, it wasn't intended uh, specifically for students that have a print disability, although it helps a lot with um, students that have a print disability, but it's got a lot of features that uh, a lot of other students can use. It's a matter of, of I'll pull up the American literature, for example, and this is a, a regular textbook, and again, I can highlight it, and it'll start reading. And I don't want to get into a lot of detail about Read Out Loud, but, um, but it's, it's intended for, for everybody's use. Uh, another nice feature over on the right-hand side here is our note-taking feature. And the note-taking feature um, allows you to highlight and, and pull information in from a variety of sources. It may be from, from my, my book that I have over here. I can go out onto the web. Uh, put information over here, and when I click on that particular um, title or subtitle, it automatically takes me right back to where I found um, that particular sighting. So, again, a really nice program um, to, to play around with and, and, and have students utilize. Um, it, it will work with um, NIMAS files. It will work with um, PDFs, uh, accessible PDFs, and those are the type that you can click on and copy and paste. If you can't click on it, it's a, it, it's a picture. And Read Out Loud does not read a PDF that's a picture. You can also do rich text file formats. You can do HTML, and you can do text file formats. It will not do a Word document, which is a .doc or .docx extension. But all you have to do, if you have a Word document, is go in um, to the file and save as, and just slide down and select the RTF setting. And once you save it as an RTF, you won't lose your Word document. It just is another, another um, part of, of, the, of the Word document, which is saved as an RTF. And then you bring it in, and, and you can read it in Read Out Loud. So just some things that you can do you know, with Read Out Loud. And we'll probably be touching base more on the kinds of features, in-depth features, um, that Read Out Loud can, can really do and, and help the students in the state. Another question that we often get a lot is about our website and our lending library. So I'd like to take you there real quick. We have an online lending library. And this is our, the patents website. And this is what will come up. And um, we have pull down tabs across the top here that, uh, that you can navigate. And one of the things that, that we often get is, um, how do I loan, get equipment for loan? And it's under services, and it's our lending library tab here. You can do it one of two ways. I can click on it like that, or if I click on services, it'll populate along the left-hand side, and I'll go to lending library here. And this gives just a brief description of the kinds of things that, um, information that, that we can share with you about um, the process and so forth. It, it, our, our lending library catalog, which is down here at the bottom, if I go to, um, to visit our lending library, I, online catalog, um, we have a combination of all five of the patent sites that have a listing of the, of the types of materials that are available for loan. And we, we may have duplications and we may not have duplications. It just depends on, on the type of device. 
But if I type in um, a device here, like the Red Cap, and I go to Find Product, this is what we'll see across the top. Let me zoom in a little bit here. It might be a little bit easier to see. Um, you can also search by categories. This happens to be hearing. Um, but it's the Red Cat Classroom Sound Field System. And the vendor is Lightspeed. And the cost is $895. And then we can go to View, de view Details. And we click on that. And I'll back out here a little bit. Um, and this gives you just a brief description of, of what the product look lo looks like, um, what the product uh, is about. So it, it really is a nice way to sort of search through some things. If you have something in mind that you'd like to try, come in and take a look at, at our, our searchable library catalog. Um, again, I, we can go by categories. Um, we've got AAC and AAC evaluation, hardware, software, hearing, um, toys, and vision, and so forth. And, or you can actually do a keyword, or if you know a vendor that you want to look for specific stuff from. It may be enabling devices um, or so forth, J.R. Cooper. Or you can go in and, and do a maximum cost. If you know that, that you, can, you're, you can only spend maybe $500, it'll also isolate those things that are $500 or less. So just a, a nice way to go in and take a look at what we have available. We're constantly trying to, to keep updated. Um, we've got thousands of things available, and we're actually going through and, and taking out those things that have been discontinued and, and we'll salvage those and then we'll get more, more uh, materials as we go along with the school year. So um, if you have any suggestions about the kinds of things that maybe patents should take a look at, feel free to drop a uh, site coordinator a line so that we can kind of have an idea. I like to keep a little wish list um, by my phone just in case somebody says, do you happen to have, I didn't see it on, on your, your patents website. So I'll go ahead and, and, uh, and keep a record of that. And, and depending on, on funding and so forth, maybe uh, pull that into our library system. One of the other things I want to show you um, regarding the, the lending process is uh, the, the form that you use. And I think our, uh, our access here is just a little bit slow today. But what I can do is, I actually have it downloaded. And let me decrease. This is the patents uh, lending library form. And it's, it's the same form that are used by all of the, the five patent sites. So um, it, it's identical form. It's just where you um, send the, the form or the request. And it can be done two different ways. Um, most of the sites have a printable version where you can actually print it out, fill it in, and fax it or, or um, snail mail it to us. Or we have the fillable one, which actually um, this one is. I can go in, fill it, save it as maybe my name, um, and then email it to the site coordinator and, and do the request. I would like to point out that there are some um, assumed responsibilities um, and, and a variety of other things. We do have a late fee. We try to to um, give everyone you know, six weeks of, of time in order to borrow it. We work like a regular library. If we don't have it available, um, we'll put a hold on it. Um, and then when it comes in, we'll notify you and, and we'll, um, we'll send that out. So we can do it one of two ways. Down here at the bottom, um, you can either come to the, to the site to pick it up or you can have it shipped. And some confusion is that, well, do you, do you pay for return shipping? And we don't. We ship to you. We'll pay that part, but it's your responsibility then to ship it back to us. So um, with that being said, I think I kind of covered some of the issues that we've really had come up here early in the year, and, and we may have some other ones. I'll do, best, I'll do my best to, to bring those to light and share as best we can. Um, I think those are the common ones. One thing I'd like to plug is our state conference that's coming up November 4th and 5th of this year. Um, we are going to have a variety of sessions. We have national presenters coming. It's going to be down at the Crown Plaza um, at Union Station here in Indianapolis. And we've always had a, a good turnout, and we're really looking forward to, uh, to another, um, another great uh, state conference. So um, keep that in mind. Get some registrations going if you can. Um, and we'll, we'll wrap that up, I think. Um, I would like to let you know about September 17th. That's going to be our next uh, Patents TV episode 28. And that's our vendor presentation feature. Um, and 
the 17th, episode 28, we're going to have J.R. Cooper and Associates. Um, and the product that we're going to be looking at is going to be the big Bluetooth keyboard for the iPad. And we'll take a look at that. We'll also take a look at J.R. Cooper's website. Um, he's got a lot of information there, a lot of product available um, to, uh, to browse and, and see what might be um, useful for maybe a student that, that you might have um, an interest in um, getting, in, getting materials for. So again, that'll be September 17th, and we'll wrap that up. And I'd like to say thank you for watching. Thank you.